What's up, Kellogg gang? All right, so we got the statics problem here. So it's a rock, it's a rock climber, very natural, because I'm a rock climber too. So a uh, man, it is 40 kilograms. Uh, let me draw that or write that down. Mass is 40 kilograms. And then he's wedged between these two rocks like so, and uh, he's using the crevice uh, to try to push himself up. And what we're solving for is what is the minimum force that he must apply to the walls in order to uh, not fall down, basically. And there's a couple of things we have left. So the friction, so I'm gonna label this uh, uh, shoes is 0.4, and the coefficient between the rock is 0.3. So yeah, let's go ahead and solve this now. Uh, yeah, so let's draw a force body diagram before I forget. So a force body diagram. Um, what do we have here? So right, a center of mass, it doesn't really matter where you put the center of mass, you'll find out later in this problem. But let's just draw it uh, about here probably. So this is a uh, force of gravity. And then of course, this is the rock wall on either side. So the normal force on each side is gonna be pushing inward. We're going to label this normal of the rock, and then this is the normal from the shoes. And then, of course, friction opposes motion, so the motion wants to move down, so the friction is moving up. So we can label this friction of the rock, and this is friction of the shoes. So there you go. So this is our force body diagram. We don't have any distances, which is going to be fine. Uh, we don't need them. Um, so how are we going to solve this, right? We're solving for... Uh, basically, what we're solving for is these normal forces, basically. And that's going to be the force applied. So, let's go ahead. So, how are we going to solve this, right? Well, if we do some of the forces in the y direction, we're going to realize that uh, force gravity is equal to that. So, let's go ahead and just do it. Some of the forces in the y is equal to zero. is equal to, so it's negative force of gravity plus the force of friction between the shoes plus the force of friction between the rock. So we know that the friction is equal to normal times the coefficient of static friction. So we can label it zero is equal to negative force gravity is mass times gravity, plus the coefficient of static friction between the shoes times the normal of the shoes, plus the coefficient of static friction at the rock, plus the normal of the rock. So now we're at this equation. Uh, how are we going to simplify this more, right? We have these two unknowns, and we want one of them. So let's go ahead and find out. What we can do here is uh, we can take some of the forces in the x direction now, and we're going to find that the normal of the shoes minus the normal of the rock is equal to zero. So you can basically end up with the equation, the normal of the rock is equal to the normal of the shoes. So we can use this over here just to simplify this equation even more. Let's go ahead and get rid of the normal of the shoes and just replace it with the normal of the rock. So zero is equal to negative mass times gravity plus, uh, so we're getting rid of normal of the shoes, so it'll be static friction of the shoes, normal of the rock. So we replace the normal from the shoes to the normal of the rock because we know that they're equal to each other. That's the coefficient of static friction of the rock, normal of the rock. So of course now we can factor out, uh, switch colors. So just factoring out the normal of the rock. So u static plus, or u of the shoes plus u of the rock. These are different. And then all we have to do is move it over. So if we add mass gravity over and then divide by this, we're gonna get that normal is equal to mass gravity divided by the coefficient of the shoes plus coefficient of the rock. So then if we just plug in our numbers now, we're going to get that normal a rock is equal to mass of the gravity, or mass is 40, gravity is 9.81, and then the static friction, so 0 0.4 plus 0 0.3, and then if you solve this, you get, um, let me write it over here. Uh, 561 newtons. So that means that each force that you're applying is 561 newtons. So you're basically, the total force that you need to apply is 561 newtons. So that's your answer right there, 561 newtons. 
So in pounds, that's about 126 pounds, I think is what it was. Uh, so yeah, that's a realistic number, right? You can probably push that many uh, pounds against a wall and stay out there. So yeah, that's how you solve this problem. Uh, not too tricky, but just uh, gotta know how to draw your force body diagram and think about it. Yeah, so thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, and check out my statics playlist. Peace.